Hey, it's Rachel with Rachel Polar Dog Training, and I'm here with Susan with Pack Leader Dog Training for our weekly Q&A. You're going to start us out with question one? Yes, I am. So question one, how much should I play with my puppy per day? Wow. Okay, so I'm really bad at figuring out like timing and schedules, and that's what like Susan is great at. <laughs> but I do know that puppies should be on like a consistent schedule. So we want to have your puppy in a crate and then you take them out to go potty and then you play with them for a little bit and then they go back in their crate. Um, as far as how long the play session is going to be, I don't actually know. I, I, I don't know. I've not, I've not raised a puppy or have anything to do with the puppy other than going to someone's house and training them. Um, so I'm not really good with timing, Susan. How long? <laughs> how long should you? And I guess it depends. When I say puppy, I'm talking like 12 to 20 weeks old. I'm talking like yeah. puppy, puppy, right? Okay, yeah. yeah. I don't know. I know you want to have them on a the schedule, and I know you want to separate playtime from potty time. So a lot of times, if people are creating their puppy, they'll just take them outside and play. But then the puppy comes inside and goes potty because it was playing outside. So I know you want to separate those. But as far as like actual durations, I don't know. I know Susan's got a super awesome post that has a schedule listed out that I don't remember. <laughs> so with Help puppies, me out here. usually um it's very structured they're in the kennel or they come out to work potty and or play but it depends where in the training process they are um obviously I'm different than a normal person so I have a trainer brain so if I have your puppy it's going to be pretty structured for the first like four days or so so they may get one 20 to 30 minute play session their last potty break. So they're gonna go outside to go potty. And when we come in, we're gonna play inside for like 20, 30 minutes. And then you go in your kennel for bedtime. The rest of the day is very structured with potty and training time. So I only do like one play session, but like as the puppy gets older and they get more freedom because they have their basic understanding of the commands, then I might give them like two play sessions a day and then increase it, you know, per day. Um, but honestly, at first, I'd probably keep it to like 20 to 30 minutes because the rest of the time they're going to be exhausted from doing their commands. So, you know, at night, I like to end with like a fun play to exhaust them and then go and then put them in their crate to go to bed. So oh, but there's, no, makes a lot of sense. there's no right or wrong answer, honestly. Um, as unless long as they're structural. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, 20, 30 minutes. Thank you for teaching me something today, Susan. Yes, <laughs> you're welcome. Uh, okay, um, let's see, on to my next question. We've got a lot of puppy questions today, by the way. Um, nice. So my 13 week old Springer Spaniel keeps chewing his leash. What should I do? So my favorite thing is compressed air. You will hear me say that <laughs> for a lot of puppy behaviors um, because it's a very good punisher and it's not too harsh. If it was like an adult dog, I'd do a leash pop, something like that, um, or a bonker. You could use a bonker for a puppy, but my go-to is um, the compressed air. If you didn't have compressed air, you can try a finger pop to the back side. So I take two fingers. And so when the puppy's chewing the leash, I'm gonna say no to mark that and then finger poke them in the soft spot uh, right behind the ribs. Usually just like startles them. Um, but the problem with that is sometimes puppies kind of think you're playing because you don't do it the right way. Like you just do it too soft and they'll turn around and nip your finger. If that happens, now you have to say no to that and correct that behavior with something that the puppy deems a value, like a yeah, valuable punisher, like something that the, makes that dog not do that behavior again. So I just start with compressed air because that always gets them to stop. They're like, eh. what about you? No, that's great. So compressed air is a new tool that I've learned from you. For those of who don't know, I learned that from Susan. Um, so I've only been using the compressed air for a few months. So before that, I would just do a leash pop. Like leashes in the puppy's mouth, no pop. Because then leash goes out of their mouth. And the dog was like, well, that wasn't pleasant because I have this thing in my mouth and then it like rips out of my mouth, like gross. Um, and then give them something else to chew on or distract them with training or playing or whatever. Um, but yeah, I usually just do a leash pop, but now that I've got compressed air, um, now that new literal tool in my tool pouch, um, that's a good choice too, because, you know, when you're popping a leash out of their mouth, you gotta kind of be careful because they have little baby puppy teeth. 
but yeah but basically just find a um like you said something a uh punisher that they will put value to um that's not the expression whatever whatever we call it um yeah a punisher that they care about right exactly all right my bichon hates my brother every time he comes over my dog barks at him my brother hasn't ever done anything to him what do i do um maybe your brother's just a jerk no um so your bichon probably doesn't hate your brother um just saying like does this happen with other people or does your brother just happen to be the only one coming over to your house so like let's not make it personal um so what you want to do is lots of different things as always i've got like 10 things that pop in my head so first we can just crack the barking like, you're not going to bark at them that's not what we do you can practice door drills so before your brother comes over you can like knock and have somebody else walk in or knock and have them not even walk in um but at the end of the day we're just not going to bark when someone comes through the door so when your brother comes over even if your bichon really does hate your brother someone's still coming over and you're not going to get to bark at them so that's like correcting the behavior and then as far as when we talk about training i'm like yes i'll tell you what i don't want you to do but i also want to tell them what to do right because then they're left well i know what i can't do but what am i supposed to do um so you could train them place and part of being on a place is you're lying down and you're calm so then you won't be barking or you can crate train them still lying down and calm not barking um but yeah that's my thoughts I like that because place is just a very valuable command to have anyway. You're going to mm-hmm. want to use it other times. So place means lay on this bed or this object until I tell you not to. And the rules of place are you're laying down and you're being good, meaning no barking, whining, any kind of that nonsense stuff. So you can just use place and hold your dog accountable for the rules of place for when your brother comes over. So even though brother's coming over, you're not allowed to bark on place. Like we've gone over this, place is just for sleeping. Just lay there. Um, Or like Rachel said, I don't know if the dog does anything more than barking, like if it growls or anything like that. Um, But the kennel might be your friend if that's the case. Just if there's any of that like dangerous barking or behavior. I like it. Uh... Do, do, do. What are we moving to the next one? Are we on four? Okay. Um, so Susan, my puppy is scared to walk down the stairs. Will she grow out of this? Maybe, maybe not. Depends on you and the puppy. Um, I would rather you train that, uh, train your dog to have confidence and be able to do the stairs rather than like roll the dice and see if the dog grows out of it. Um, I, I would probably say no, it wouldn't. Like I know some dogs that they would just poop and pee on the deck because they don't want to go downstairs. I don't know if it's because they're scared of the stairs or they just don't want to go outside. I don't know. Um, So it's possible that your dog never grows out of that fear and it's just going to stay on the porch. Um, So it depends on how old the puppy is. I know Rachel has an awesome video about um working with a dog and how to get his confidence up to get to work down the stairs but it's just um leash pressure paired with like food luring so and again depending on how old the dog is so if it's more of an adult dog i'm probably just gonna apply leash pressure and get you to come down the stairs Mm -hmm. Um, but if it's a puppy then i'm gonna do like constant leash pressure so that the puppy can't go backwards it can only go forwards and then pair that with like food luring um on the stairs so you just put some food like on the stairs um but i can let you talk more about that since you did your video on it thank you um yeah so whenever i hear will my puppy grow out of blah my usual go into go to answer is always just no like your puppy might grow out of it depending on what you're doing to help change it um so like the thing with the puppy is if it's scared of the stairs and you never do anything to teach them that the scares, stairs aren't scary, they're not likely to just one day wake up and say, hey, this isn't so bad. Not saying it's not possible, but like it's not super likely because they've got no reason to change if you haven't showed them. Um, that's kind of what I think anyways. Um, but yeah, so like Susan explained, um, it's just leash pressure and with a puppy, I will use food. So I will start with just trying to food lure the puppy down the stairs. Um, I put the food like just to where they can't reach it. So they're going to have to put a foot down to the next step. Um, some puppies will follow the food lore like that. Um, I'll place some food on the step underneath of them. 
Um, and then when they're really struggling, um, of course I'll do leash pressure. So my leash pressure means you can't back away, but I'm not pulling the puppy down the stairs. So if you try to back away, you're going to get leash pressure. But other than that, like not too much, like sometimes I'll give them some pressure to help guide them down the stairs, but it's mainly just, you can't retreat because sometimes puppies will get down one step and be like, okay, this is enough and try to go back up. We're not going to do that because we're going to go all the way down. Uh, then the other thing I'll do if it's a super, super shy puppy, and this is usually my last resort after trying leash pressure and luring for a while, I will help them out and put their front feet on the first step because that their back end is going to naturally follow because they don't get to go backwards. And once they have that successful rep themselves, they're usually like, oh, I could just like go down these stairs. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so I do have a video on there with cute Sally. Um, but that's what we did with her. So I lured her and did some leash pressure, but she's a super nervous little puppy. Um, so I put her feet on the step for her and then her back end followed. And then after that, it was easy peasy. It's so awesome too. If you have a dog that's scared of anything, um, cause I just talked to some people that their puppy's kind of shy. Um, and I told them anytime your dog acts nervous or fearful around something, use it as a training opportunity to to get them to work past it so you know make it into a good thing like you're going to walk past this thing or whatever it is um and i'm going to reward you for just walking past it and then if you smell it i'm going to reward you you know and you're really going to get a more confident puppy that way and it's really cool to see them come out of their shell or like in rachel's video to actually see the puppy go from not wanting anything to do with the stairs to then just walking down them it's really mm -hmm. cool it is that's uh like those breakthrough moments are one of my favorite parts of training. It's like, you couldn't do that and now you can. And yeah. today, I, today I walked down the steps. Uh, I was carrying a place cut down the steps. So I just walked down and figured I'd have to like go back and help her down the stairs. And she just followed me. Aww. It's, it's just so cute to like see them grow. So yeah. great. Yeah. Okay. Number five, I've been working with my dog on basic commands. When can I move her to the e-collar? So let's see, it's going to depend. So I know when we do it, it's a little different to know when you're going to do it, but I guess um, you've been working on your basic commands. Um, I'm assuming you're naming them, which means you can say sit, your dog is going to sit. You can say down, your dog is going to down. Um, make sure you have a release word. Those are super important, but that's a different conversation. So if your dog is doing all the commands when you're naming it, and if you can get said behavior, if they don't do it, so whether you're luring or using leash pressure or both, then you're ready. Um, and then you would want to e-collar train in steps. So we never want to just throw on the e-collar and just start pushing buttons and start correcting. Um, you can train like that, but I've trained like that before. I've seen it. It's not as successful. It's not as fun. It just it just sucks. Um, so the way we train e-collar is we teach pressure on, pressure off, rather than just using it as a correction. So as much as I really, I honestly, this isn't sarcasm, love to talk about the e-collar steps. I can't go into all of them on this Q&A or Susan might like shoot me. Um, but you, at this point, if you can name a command and your dog can do it, and if you can get it with leash pressure or lowering, you are ready to move on to studying how to e-collar train your dog. So watch some YouTube videos, look at some steps. The steps we do is continuous stem, non-compliant stem, and then correctional. Um, hit us up if you want some more questions about those. Uh, but at this point, you're ready to start researching to move into e-collar training. Um, what do you think? No, I love that. Yeah, if you can get the command, if you say the command and your dog does it reliably, and then if they don't, you can get it with food lowering or leash pressure, then yeah, you can move on to e-collar um, work. I I think I only have three videos out on e-collar stuff, um, which would be place, and I have at least place and recall on the e-collar. Um, so nice. start with those. <laughs> start with those, and then I'll try to get my other videos up. But yeah. But yeah. And uh, with you, Carla, like, just be patient, do the steps, watch Susan's videos, and if you've got any questions, let us know. Uh, 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 um, also, e collar mini educator from e collar Technologies. That is the only way to go. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I feel like I should be getting paid to say that, but I'm not. They're just that great. 
my laptop is currently stacked up on four of them right now. So yeah. um, let's see, what are we on six? Okay. Um, how should I start crate training my 10 week old puppy? And is that too young to start now anyways? Is that too young? No. Um, you can start crate training the moment you bring them home. How would you start? So you said eight, 10 weeks? Yeah. 10 weeks. Okay, so your dog should be able to hold its bladder for like two to three hours, three hours-ish pushing it. Um, so I would have it in the kennel for, let's say, two hours to start. So in the kennel, you come out, go outside to go potty, come inside, work and play a little bit, probably back outside to go potty just in case, mm -hmm. and then back in the kennel. Um, so that's how I would do it. I would just have the dog in the kennel for two hours at a time and taking out to go potty after leaving the kennel and right before going back into the kennel. That's fair. I like that. Yeah. Yeah, so I agree. So you want to start like now, right? Might as well start. The sooner you start, the better because you're just making it a way of life and you're setting your dog up to be super comfortable in the kennel. Um, so do just like Susan said, as far as going in the kennel for two hours, potty, play, potty, kennel. Um, and then depending on like how much you want to do, you can like put food in there, like toss some food in there and let them walk in. I don't know if I would have a 10 week old puppy sitting before going in the kennel, but cause they don't know anything for sit yet. Um, but, but you can still like toss some food in there for them, close the kennel door. Um, and it's not probably going to be pretty the first time unless they're already super exhausted and just pass out. Um, but if your puppy starts biking, barking or biting at the crate in any way, uh, you would just want to mark that with no. And then the best way I've seen to correct puppies in the kennel is you roll up some socks. You know how like some people like roll their socks, right? Um, roll up some socks, say no, throw the ball of socks at the kennel or something um it's like a bonker you throw a bonker at the kennel and then the puppy's like oh crap I can't bark and act like a fool in the kennel um but that's the quickest way I've seen for puppies to get them comfortable in the crate and then just to touch on this because I know somebody's gonna think it well won't throwing stuff at the kennel make my dog hate it more no because your dog's already not having a great time in there because they're barking and biting at the kennel by throwing something at it it's a disruptor disruptor and then your dog can like settle back down and then they'll learn that the acting like a fool in the kennel is not fun but being calm in the kennel is fun if that makes sense right yeah um and yeah the same thing like punishing in the kennel it's not going to make them hate the kennel mm -hmm. because if that were the case when i punish my dog for biting their leash now they hate the leash or now they hate standing there you know it just doesn't add up it's just right. a false fear, I guess. So I've never seen that happen. I've never seen punishing a dog in a kennel make anything worse. It it always makes it better. Like they're just like, oh, I can't do this in the kennel. I'm just going to lay down. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's there's a bit of a learning curve with the puppy. So just keep that in mind because it is a puppy. So there's going to be some whining. It's going to be some, you know, especially because it just like got away from its mom. So just be patient with yourself and the puppy. And consistent. Yes. Is it mine? Uh, yeah. 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 Because yeah. um, I was your seven. Okay, well, listen to this one. Is it a puppy it's kennel question? Puppy. Mm -hmm. No. Okay. My three-month-old boxer picks up every leaf and stick outside. How can I stop this? Well, now you don't have to, like, hire someone to rake your leaves for you. I don't see the problem. Um, okay, so 12 weeks old, picking up a bunch of crap outside. Sorry, picking up a bunch of leaves and sticks outside. Um, so, I don't know if this is right, but I'm going to say it anyways, because that's all I ever do. Um, so, for me, a 12-week-old puppy, I don't know that I would have them outside not on a leash even in like a fenced yard maybe to me because puppies are so like i don't know i've never had a puppy so for I starters do, i do know this puppy is on a leash 
Okay, perfect. Okay, so you're outside with the puppy on a leash. Great. Um, and then he goes to pick up something. I would almost treat it just like as if you were like biting on me or biting on his leash or whatever. I would say no, and you could correct. Um, and then he has a puppy and he's probably doing that because he's trying to play. So if you're not outside for a potty time, you can play with him with something else and be like, no, we don't play with the leaves and the sticks, but here we can play with this toy. But if you are outside for like potty time, walking helps, right? So we're gonna like maybe walk around, like pace back and forth in this designated potty area. Um, still, if we pick something up, like no, and like take it out of his mouth or like put your fingers in his mouth or something. Um, and yeah, that's all I got. <laughs> Yeah, so I would say no. So mark it with no because you don't want them doing it. So no. And then the first thing I do, because it's it's a young puppy, so I'm going to be kind of soft to start. Oh, yeah. And then if it doesn't work, I'm amping up my Punisher. So I start um, playing with my pencil. I start with when they have the leaf in their mouth, I use my finger. So I'm like, no. And I'll push my finger like in the corner. Mm -hmm. so that the dog opens their mouth on their own so it's like they're yes. doing the work hopefully the leaf falls out if it doesn't i'll use my other hand to take it out but at least like the puppy's doing half the work by like get that out of your mouth so they open their mouth um if that doesn't work then i'm gonna say the next time they do it i'm gonna say no and do a finger poke to the butt like i talked about earlier like um right behind the ribs and if that doesn't work, I might do like a leash pop, a slight leash pop. Um, this puppy was wearing a flat. No, this puppy had a slip lead on. Um, I would not probably wouldn't do it with the prong collar because it's so young. Yeah, she's only yeah. 13. So she's just a, on a slip lead. Um, but it really depends like what your puppy gives you. So if you start with the lowest punisher, and the next time your puppy thinks about it. So you do that finger thing to the mouth and then your puppy like thinks about the leaf next time, still does it. I'm gonna try the finger poke to the mouth again. But if you do the finger poke to the mouth and the puppy like just goes right back and grabs a, a leaf, oh, then obviously that wasn't even enough to make a puppy think about like, think about the leaf. They're like, no, nope, I'm gonna still do it. So then just up your punisher. Um, oh, another one, if the finger poke doesn't work, is the compressed air because I did have a client I meant to say that yeah I did yeah Bindi I did have a client where she would pick up every leaf and <laughs> she said thank you so much for that compressed air idea because she had to do it twice and now she won't touch another leaf again nice and um it's not like she takes the compressed air out every time so mm -hmm. it had a lesson yeah Nice. When you were reading that question to me, I was thinking about her and I was like, I'm going to say that. I'm going to remember it. And then I forgot it. <laughs> Whatever. Okay. So eight. Are we on eight? Yeah. Yep. All right. Um, I want to do agility training with my new dog, um, but he's kind of shy. Will he not be able to do agility then? I wouldn't say that. Um, agility in and of itself can actually build a dog's confidence. So find somebody, a place that does agility if you want to get into like competitive stuff because that's what they do. So they'd be able to help you troubleshoot through any of those problems. Um, if you just want to do it like backyard wise, like you get your own equipment and do it, get your own equipment and do it. Mm -hmm. um, because that's going to really help build its confidence. If your dog's even like, so let's say you get a jump and your dog won't even go near it because it's that scared of the jump, then you're just going to desensitize it to walking by it. So you walk by this jump, here's your food, like click and reward. Now we're going to walk up closer to it, click, here's your food. If they try to smell it, click, here's some food. Um, but like just teach existence first. And then since it's a shy puppy, I would do all of its training through confidence. So you don't get to eat a free meal you're only eating next to this scary jump thing because then the scary jump thing turns into like a jackpot food reward thing. Um, and that's what I would probably clicker train that dog um, to that. Like you could clicker or just say good. Um, but I personally tend to do 
good markers with obedience and clicker training with tricks and stuff because because you'll you'll see the dog change like because we have human error i might say good a different way each time and sometimes i might say good and sometimes i might say good because we're just human and we're gonna do that whereas the clicker is a clicker is a clicker and plus when you're clicker training because it's like a trick training for me there's no punisher so like the dog is going to end up loving this agility jump after a while but yeah, just because your dog's nervous doesn't mean it can't do agility. You're just going to have to work it through it to be able to do it. Right. Yeah, so I completely agree with you. So because I'm a trainer, I'm going to just say this. New dog, you want to do obedience training with them as well. That'll be a confidence builder. And then agility training, I tell people, like, that's a big confidence builder for dogs. Um, but like you were mentioning earlier, we were talking about puppies being scared of things. I think it's what we are talking about, the stairs. Like anything you can take that your dog's scared of, and work them through that is building their confidence and it's going to help them be more confident when they uh get to something else that they're scared of because they're like i can overcome anything uh, so yeah agility training just like you said i super love clickers for trick training because for me clicker you always get a food good is a variable reward so sometimes i'm gonna say good just to tell you like you're doing what you're supposed to do but you're not going to get a food reward sometimes you will whereas clicker every time i click you get a treat. So that clicker becomes super freaking valuable. So clicker condition the dog using its daily food and then do existence work, like you said, around the agility equipment and clicker training the tools, like starting slow for like a jump. You're not going to walk up to a jump and expect him to jump at the first day. You're going to get him used to being comfortable around it. Then you're going to take the little things that he jumps over and set it on the ground and just have him walk over it. And then you can slowly make it higher. Um, so it might take longer than like a dog who's like super outgoing, um, it can certainly be done and it will help your dog. So don't know that they're gonna be competing in agility, don't know how scared this dog is, but you can build their confidence and y'all can have some fun with it. Right. That's what I think. I love agility for like the nervousy dogs. And then like we were talking about watching them have the breakthroughs and like overcome things. Imagine that, imagine how great you'd feel if you got a dog who's too scared to even come near this jump and you got them like running through their agility stuff. Right. It's pretty cool. All right. When I come home, my German Shepherd greets me at the door with a toy in her mouth. I don't mind that, but then she starts whining and pacing. Is there a way to just stop the pacing and whining? So you don't mind that she greets you with a toy, but you mind the pacing and the whining. So a few things, if she's pacing and whining, her mindset's probably not all that in a bag of chips. So we need to address her mindset. Um, so by doing that, you would incorporate like balance and structure and stuff throughout the rest of her life and make her be more confident. Um, you could get home and she can greet you at the door and you can straight away send her to a place command until she calms down. Um, or you could just crate your dog so they don't get to come up and greet you at the door. Now, try sending them to a place first. If your dog knows place, if not, train in place because like every dog knows a place. Um, but you get home, your dog greets you, you send them to a place, they calm down, then you release them. If your dog can't handle that, then you coming home and them greeting you at the door is too much adrenaline for them. So while it might be cute, because I'm not gonna lie, if Guy ever did that to me, like my heart would probably explode if she like walked up to me with a toy in her mouth. Um, she doesn't need that. But we have to think, you know, because I want my dog to do this because it's super cute. Is it good for their mental health and their state of mind? So if they can't handle coming up to me with a toy and then going away and calming down, then they can't handle coming up to me and grinning at the door. So then they're just going to be in a crate. And I'll let them out when I get home. Um, right. That's what I think. What do you think, Ms. Susan? Right. So easiest thing would be to create them because then they don't that doesn't even happen they don't get the chance to get too excited when you come home um, i do like your idea of sending them to place so when they come home you just immediately say place and then that way it's hopefully they'll end up getting the picture like when mom comes home i'm just placed um, alternatively you could also correct them from getting the toy because the fact that they get a toy they're already in an excited state of mind they're going to grab this toy and hold on to it and then they just like amp up after that um, so I might just say, 
like when you come in the door, they'll greet you. I would say no, and then tell them to like lay or place. But I would probably say no so that they drop their toy or out mm -hmm. and then tell them to lay or tell them to place. I wasn't even thinking about the fact that they have a toy in their mouth when you would send them to place. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> no, out them, whatever, and then here, go calm down. Right. Cool thing about place is it's like meditating. So it's like, boom, go over there and calm down. And then I'll talk to you later. Right. I like it. I like it. Could you greet me with toys in your mouth? Because that would be cute. No, didn't mm -hmm. think so. She doesn't have access to her toys anyways. Oh. Okay. Um. So last question, question 10. Our 180th question, just because it's fun to say. How crazy is that? Oh, it's super crazy. Okay. Um, Susan, can I put blankets on my dog's place cot? Uh, will it ruin the command? Yes, you can put blankets on your place cot. Um, I would say no, it wouldn't ruin the command if you're, okay, so I don't know, we're just spitball here. But like, so if you're going to put a blanket on your place cot, I would suggest it's slightly smaller or equal size of your place cot caught <laughs> because if it's bigger wouldn't that would that just extend the place command so like if my blanket goes past place i didn't even think about that right what type so, of unorganized like, person would just toss a blanket on the no, I, I have no <laughs> in my head i'm like a neatly folded blanket sitting right? on top of the place bed <laughs> okay you're right you're right sorry you got a little ocd in me so okay continue but yeah so Okay, if you if it's small, slightly smaller or equal size of your place bed, no, it won't ruin place. Definitely do it. But just because, why not? So say your place bed's like this big, and your blanket, you just kind of lay it across, and it's like goes mm -hmm. past the place bed. That's place now, right? The That's blanket. gonna really confuse the boundaries. Mm -hmm. Didn't yeah. think about that. Yeah. So as long as the bedding stays on the cot, so your dog, because the reason I really like the place on cots is because it's elevated. There's no question about what's breaking the place because it, literally if you come off it, you're going to be on the ground and that's not okay. Um, but yeah, you can put stuff on there. I've seen dog beds on there. I put dog beds on there, blankets, whatever, as long as it's on it. Right. Um, it won't ruin it. You can have it out with blankets on it and your dog can go on and come off when they please. And you can still walk up to it later that same day and put them on as a command and they're still going to stay on until you let them go. Um, because place just means stay in this like border, right? It's a defined object. It's got clear edges. Um, right. So it can be anything. It could be a cot. It could be a dog bed. It could just be a folded up blanket. Um, different things you place your dog on, you might have to help them out the first time. They like, if they're placing somewhere new. Um, but yeah, it won't ruin it. And then your dog will be more comfy. I put yeah. blankets on guys for her sometimes. Of course sometimes. you do. Huh, she can cover up with blankets sometimes. Yeah, she does. She's blue. She's a little brat. Hmm. So, that's Q&A number 18. What do you think? Okay. <laughs> cool stuff. Um, as always, it's been a lot of fun. If anyone has any questions about what we answered today, looking for any clarity, let us know if you've got any questions you want us to answer next week. Let us know. We're on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube at Pack Leader Dog and Rachel Kohler Dog Training. Bye. See ya.